Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host, Evan Teague, with, like always, is Noah Bailey. So, this week we have a ton of stuff to catch up on. Nothing that's, like, I would consider, like, a big main topic, but just a ton of stuff that I want to talk to you about. Um, I think the first thing I wanted to talk about is... There was a couple of Marvel games officially announced kind of recently. And mm. the first one I want to talk about is this new... 6v6 free-to-play Overwatch-style Marvel game called Marvel Rivals. You've seen this? I have, yeah. it's It looks... It's interesting. It's one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, I didn't see that coming, but maybe kind of see how it goes. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, don't know. I, I, know, I feel like these kind of games, like, there's a lot of these, like, open shooter, team shooter kind of games, and I feel like mm-hmm. it's very interesting to have kind of a Marvel spin on it. I... Don't know how successful that's going to be, but I mean, I don't think it's just like immediately kill it with fire. So let's see. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will say it's very interesting that this kind of game is being released now, right? Considering back in like 2016, 17, 18, like back before, uh, back before, um, like, uh, like, like the Fortnite and those kinds of games happened, mm. like Battle Royales happened, like 2016, 17 was, like, the era of Overwatch clones and, like, you know, shooter MOBAs and that type of thing. And then very quickly those either got superseded by Battle Royales or just fell off because they weren't as popular as Overwatch. And now Overwatch is trying its best, but it is just not... It is not doing very well right now. (laughs) Just is making a lot of weird decisions over at Blizzard, just a lot of things that just people... Make people not really want to play it anymore. Um, like the new characters they've released have been have been cool, but just the vibes of that game were just not nearly as good as they were back in 2016. So it's interesting that they they're announcing this game now, um, and like it it does look like fun. The characters that have been shown, you know look like they have very different play styles and like some characters that I've never even heard of. I'll go over over the roster in a bit, but like I wouldn't mind more companies making games like this. Like I've always been championing for a Nintendo style (laughs) shooter, like basically Smash Bros. But I think that would be just wild and crazy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely be wild. That'd be be pretty cool actually, I think. Yeah. So, so here's yeah. the roster that's... Oh, sorry. Do you have anything else you want to say? Oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So here's the roster as of right now. Obviously, because it's a free-to-play MOBA, there's going to be more added down the line, assuming it lasts mm-hmm. that long. Um, <laughs> so currently, we have Black Panther. Right. Incredible Hulk, who is kind of like a... like If you know anything about Overwatch, there's this character named D.Va, who, mm. you know, she's in the mech, but then, like, her super move, like... She gets out of the mech, and the mech explodes it out a bit. She gets back in it. That's kind of what Hulk is, where he plays as Bruce for a bit, and then, like, as the battle progresses, he can turn into the Hulk. Interesting. Yeah. Like, Bruce has a gun, and then he can transform. Okay. Of course. Okay. He, he also has this weird thing, like, the Hulk, like, in the trailer, was showing him like shooting at a green beam out of his hand. I don't know if that's ever. Is that like comes. his gamma radiation blast or something? Like is that that's is what that they're doing? Like, <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. But I mean, he was shooting it at Iron Man. Iron Man was using it to charge up his laser. And then he was doing a big super laser. So like, it's some kind of energy. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, Hulk, Doctor Strange, Groot, Iron Man. Loki, Luna Snow, a character that if you said you knew who Luna Snow was, you were lying. No one on Earth knew who this character was before since she was she was in. <laughs> no. Which is um, that's always so interesting when they do these like super deep pulls. Yeah. Part of the reason why Noah knew apparently after doing a little bit of research, she was actually originally created for a different net ease. Marvel game. It was like some mobile game from 2011, I think. And Eddie's the developer of this. So she she was created for that, and she had some tie-in comics to make her, like, canon. And now she's she 
is back here. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so she, she hasn't even really been around that long, but also she's basically their self-insert. Like, this is our character. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind there being an ice based character, but yeah, like, it's, sure, it's but... weird that you had to pick one that was <laughs> that's your own person, but whatever. Um, magic, magic. Okay. <laughs> Another one that is just a character that no one no one knew this person was. <laughs> right. Oh boy. <laughs> like there's like eight other magic magic based characters in Marvel that you could say before you get to her. <laughs> um Magneto, Mantis, Namor, Penny Parker, that's a that's a cut right there. <laughs> Interesting choice. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. Um, it's but like, like of the Spider-Man characters you can pull from, she's definitely not who I would have picked. But I don't, I don't mind it. Um, yeah, Punisher, uh-huh. Rocket Raccoon, Scarlet Witch, and sorry, Spider-Man, Star Lord, and Storm. I mean, it's a decent mix, other than some kind of deep cuts. I mean, it's not a bad mix, I guess, but. Mm-hmm. I will say, it's a little weird that we have four different Guardians of the Galaxy characters, Star-Lord, Groot, Rocket, and Mantis, of all people. <laughs> Mantis, which is, I, I yeah. think that's the only, like, not that it's a wrong choice, but I feel like there's a bunch of other characters who, like, you just feel like they deserve it more than Mantis. Not that I don't like Mantis, but she's, I don't know, I feel like... There's other Avengers and X-Men and Spider-Man characters. Fan- no, there's no Fantastic Four members on this team. That's a little weird. There's only a couple of X-Men. Only, like, three main Avengers. Like, only Hulk, Iron Man, like, kind of Doctor Strange, Black Panther, but, like, there's no Thor. There's Loki, but no Thor. It's kind of weird. <laughs> that is weird. Yeah. Loki, but no Thor? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like I said, I'm sure they'll they'll be adding more down the line, but as an opening roster, it's definitely the choices they made. I don't necessarily disagree with individual choices, but as a whole, I don't know. <laughs> Again, Rocket right? and, and Mantis all at the same time just feels a little, a little overboard. Like. I liked how the uh, most recent Marvel Ultimate Alliance game had Rocket and Groot like, kind of as the same character. Like, so they don't take up two different slots. Yeah. But... I mean... Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that does help. Yeah, I guess that helps. But yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see if if the roster going forward sticks only to like hero type characters, because the only people you can consider villains are like morally gray, kind of like anti heroes at this point, like Loki and Magneto. I mean, yeah, but I mean, they're, I mean, like they're villains. I mean, and they'll team up with the heroes when it comes to saving the world. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, if it's like, you know, like if it's like Thanos or Apocalypse, it's like, yeah, I mean, we're all good guys now, but I mean, mm-hmm. you could say the same thing about most villains, I feel like. I mean, right. I mean, yeah, I know they're, I mean, I know, like, I know Loki, especially now with more like MCU stuff, and Magneto kind of does have the like enemy of my enemy of my friend clause, but, or, and mm-hmm. yeah, enemy of my enemy is my friend clause sometimes, but like, yeah, I mean, there's still, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to add some more villains. Like, I'm kind of surprised there's not like a, like, there's probably going to be, like, a Thanos or something added just because of how popular he's become. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. And, and yeah, like, there's several Spider-Man characters, I feel, probably should get yeah. in there at some point. Venom, you yeah. know. Is the, Penny always... Parker, of all people? Like, that's such a... Yeah, that's like... so... Like, who is that for? I mean, like, not that she's not a cool character, but it's, like, that's, like, the, like, eighth Spider-Man character I would have considered. I mean... that. I think probably the logic there is that they wanted somehow to tie in with the Cross the Spider-Verse and all that. And they didn't want to pick someone who would basically just be a clone of Spider-Man. 
So they couldn't obviously they like Miles has his own has his own things going on, but like functionally in a game like this it wouldn't be that different. Obviously Gwen would have very similar piles powers. Yeah. Gwen ninety nine some more powers. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I mean but Miles does like actually does have like yeah, obviously there's still like the swinging and web, but like I mean, he does. I mean, between like venom striking, invisibility, and like, I mean, you could, I feel like you could make that work. They'd be different enough. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, if they can make them feel different in the actual Spider Man game, you could probably, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's, I mean, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's also going to be interesting to see just how far reaching they, like, what, like, all the different Marvel teams and universes and whatever they pull from because there's no one from the inhumans on here um like there's like i guess there's very few x-men uh there's very few space uh people outside of the 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 movie guardians that we got Mm -hmm. um yeah like i said there's several other magic based users that i feel (laughs) not that they should be on you know instead of magic but like there, there's others they could have used also uh there's other, also just kind of one-off characters like elsa bloodstone moon knight ghost rider like those like midnight suns team up characters yeah yeah i feel like ghost rider would be a perfect person for this kind of game mm-hmm. um yeah it's free to play coming out i think later this year for currently just announced for pc but I have a feeling it's going to come to consoles at some point. But, I mean, yeah, if it's free and my computer can run it, I'm not, I'm, I'll probably try it. Yeah, I mean, at least want to check out, yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next Marvel game that was fully revealed recently. Uh, Marvel 1943, The Rise of yeah. Hydra. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this looks this looks cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean I I don't know. Everything I've seen so far looks pretty interesting. I love how they're doing like I mean, I will say I know cuz it looks like it's what like it's obviously Captain America, Black Panther, and then like two other characters kind of There's someone, like. the lady from Wakanda and then some random soldier guy. Yeah, which like I feel like I mean, I'm never gonna like, play as him if I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, like I, I feel like that's not literally fair. The other two, it's like, come on, like you're gonna pick someone else over Black <laughs> Panther or Captain America, like mm-hmm. who probably doesn't have any powers. It's like, uh, probably not. But yeah, like when they when they originally announced this being a World War II era Black Panther and Captain America game. I was kind of hoping that they would do a thing because in the comics, there's at least one one comic where it's uh, it's Captain America, um, yeah, Captain America, Black Panther, and the original Human Torch, who is not the one from Fantastic Four. He's the android that Howard Stark makes, I think. Mm. <laughs> like they, there, I think maybe with Namor also. Like there's some other, I think it's Namor. Not him. There's some. I think there's some other four Appreciate person as well. Man. Like that could have been a cool, you know, four person. Yeah. Team up, but, but just focusing on Captain America and Black Panther, I think is is also a that that that, that that's fair. That's enough, I think. But um, they did mention Captain America did say at one point, you know, there's three super soldiers loose in loose in Paris. That's two too many. Flying. There's mm-hmm. Someone else that could be Red Skull. That could be. Like, you know, Bucky, who's already mind-controlled. Yeah. It could Future be Namor. Yeah. Somebody else, somebody, somebody yeah. Super Soldier. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like, I mean, I, that's, I mean I'm sure that's going to be revealed as we go along or in the game, maybe. But, like, yeah, I mean, the premise seems pretty cool. It's a, like, a, you know, it's a historical just that. I don't know. Every time they do, like, those back-in-the-day missions, I always think that's pretty interesting. So this mm-hmm. will be a really cool idea, and I like how they're kind of, like, it seems like they're gonna kind of have Captain America and Black Panther kind of butt heads at first, but they get along. So I feel like that's gonna be just good for storytelling, also, mm-hmm. but also just you know fun to watch. Oh yeah, watch play. Yeah, and the graphics look insane. Yes. 
<laughs> like yes. when Black Panther without his mask was talking, which Kari Payton, perfect. But yeah, you, you yep. get him when whenever you can. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, he's talking like that that's just a guy. That's just just he's real. <laughs> <laughs> Like I've seen some people be like, like this game looks more real than a lot of Marvel movies nowadays. Was like, you're not wrong. Like some of the CG in like Ant Man and a couple other like stuff looked a little rough, but this this looks this looks good. <laughs> this looks really good. Um, obviously, they did the whole they did the thing that every single modern day <laughs> modern day. Uh, um, video game reveal trailer does where they didn't show any gameplay. They just showed mm, really good cinematic CGI trailers. trailers yeah. What's the game it's actually like, going to play like? That uh, See, that, that also like worries me too because I'm kind of like, are we going to like hype up, oh, it looks so good, and then the actual game doesn't look anything like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like gosh. with, you know, with PS5 and Xbox series being as powerful as they are, I feel like we're at a point where the the cinematics and the gameplay should at least be close, but should. whether they're that good, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't know. They do have the the um th- th- this game is being developed by a studio called Sundance Studios, who is headed by one of the original people who made the first two Uncharted games. So, the lady making this knows how to make good video games, at least. So, I, I have no doubt that, like, the gameplay will be at least pretty solid, like a solid action-adventure game. Hmm. Um, I just kind of wish, just, for any reveal, any reveal trailer, unless it's, like, one of those where it's revealing just that it exists, and it's just, like, a character, like, a title screen, which I don't really love those, but for marketing reason, they have to, in order to kind of start hiring people on, that's... A, is what they have to do for some reason. Um, uh, unless it's if if your reveal trailer for a game coming out like in the next year, like within like within two years, I feel maybe you should have like at least a couple of shots of combat or traversal or something. I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of my thing. It's like give me something. Like I get it, but it's also like come on, like <laughs> give me something. Yeah. But what they did give us looks looks good, so I'll take it for now. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. It looks really dope, and I think, like, once we actually see it and we get a full feel on it, it's going to be even better, but, mm-hmm. you know, it'll take some yeah, time. Absolutely. Next up is a rumor that I dearly hope is true. A remake of Sonic Heroes is rumored to be in the work. Works. I've mentioned this game a couple of times on the podcast before, but Sonic Heroes is one of my all-time favorite games. <laughs> no, you have I've definitely heard you say that many a times. It's not it's not a traditional Sonic game. It's it's specifically a game where like you play in groups of three, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and there's other teams that also have similar, like, sp- there's a speed, a power, and a flight flying a character. Um, so, like, it can be a little slower than people might want it to sometimes. The control's going to be a little janky at times. But the music, phenomenal. The dialogue, it's perfectly cheesy, and I swear if this game were made... Like, like, if this game were made now, I guarantee, like, half the lines would be even more memed than they are now. Like, even, like, in the Sonic community, like, half the half the dialogue from this game is, is memed to death by the Sonic community. But, <laughs> like, I was guaranteed if it was made, like, it actually got a big audience now, it would, almost every single line of dialogue would just be all over Twitter all the time. Um, <laughs> like, and just... Like, it was just one of those games that you play at the perfect moment for you to just absolutely fall in love with it and just play it for hundreds of hours, even though you had no room to, like, yeah, I, I, I really, I hope this comes through. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, not, not to mention, it's one of the very few Sonic games that's not playable on Steam or anywhere. <laughs> you can play <laughs> Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. You can play Generations, like uh, uh, Sonic Mania. Like, there's a, I think all of the all the classic Sonic games, like most Sonic games are on Steam. Mm-hmm. But the Wii exclusive ones, which no one cares about, those aren't which for obvious reasons. But this game also, even though it was on GameCube, PS2, and and the original Xbox, it's not on Steam. So, so, so it's nowhere. Basically? Currently, well, no. like if you have an Xbox, if you have, if you have a disc for the original Xbox, you can play it on the Series X. Through back for backwards compatibility, but you mm-hmm. gotta, you know, <laughs> uh, as far as like buying it new digitally somewhere on a system that you have now, it's impossible. And I wish, hope this is true for that reason alone, because at least you can, you can, you can get Sonic Adventure One and Two, which is a game people have been wanting remade for a while now. But like, you can play them. <laughs> You can at least play them somehow. This you right. can Somehow I want this. Even if it's just an upscaled remaster, I, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, listen, especially, I mean, this is a game a long way to game. You love to death. It's like, yeah, this is this is big. Like, this is this was me last year with Mega Man. <laughs> so, like, right. I get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Sorry, yeah, that's still. Yeah. <laughs> so, are we. So we're talking remake and everything, or just? I would imagine it being more similar to the uh, the Sonic Generations remaster coming out this year, which okay, it's um that game is, is just like an up, I believe it's just an upscaled port with additional content added on. The main, not really concerned, but the main thing that I would, I'd be like looking out for is if it is if it is a full if it is a remaster with additional content i don't really know how they would do that because the voice cast for every sonic character has changed completely since then Mm. um i like roger craig smith but i I don't like his sonic as much as the original guy who, who played him in in that game um and i just don't for me obviously nostalgia is talking and like I, I can't pull myself away from that, but like the most of the dialogue in that game hit so hard for me just because of the energy, the very particular energy that those voice actors put into it at that time, and I just don't feel like the voice actors who are doing it now would be able to do it the same way. Not bad, just do it the same way. So if it is a full remake, it wouldn't be. I don't know. There would it would be something. For me, that would be take that would take away from the original experience. Hmm. So, if it's just like up upscale, you know, like the like the the uh, the Battlefront games, which I'll actually talk about in just a second, um, how it's you know widescreen HD graphics, like that's all I need. That's all I need. Yeah. which yeah. that should be easy to like accommodate for. But you think, yeah, you, you know, think, hopefully, yeah. Now speaking of Battlefront, um, <laughs> I I downloaded Battlefront the Battlefront collection on my Switch, okay. and have you have you touched the Battlefront collection at all? I haven't played it. No, I've per- I've heard about it online. Mm-hmm. I I never I never downloaded like, I never got this this game to play online. However, I heard that across platforms the online is broken and awful awful <laughs> just, just like awful. glitchy no people can't find it. a match games are they're crashing glitches are just it's a mess <laughs> so there's that so I, I i've been avoiding the the online mode um however just know that i've put probably over 200 hours into battlefront 2 on my pc um <laughs> And I knew, I knew that going from playing it on a PC to playing it on my Switch on a controller was not going to be the same. 
like the precision is just going to be different. Just the way things move is going to feel different. Mm. It took me like a week to adjust to just how different it was. <laughs> like legitimately the first time I got into a, a space combat mission, I, my brain couldn't comprehend how to move the ship properly. <laughs> like, I don't know what it was about it. Cause the, like the, like the, the very next time I jumped, I, I jumped into the game. I was able to do it better, but the first time I just couldn't fly straight. I don't know what it was about. I just no, couldn't do don't it. Don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like once after, like after a couple of, a couple of sessions, I got the hang of it. I still feel like I'm as good at it as I am on PC, but like, you know, it being in widescreen looks, looks really good. Um, uh, the, the dialogue, you know, all the things the clones and droids and whoever say is all still absolutely iconic. Um, <laughs> uh, and the main selling point for this remaster was the addition of addition, yeah, addition of additional hero characters being Asajj mm -hmm. Ventress and Kid Fisto. Kid Fisto, yeah, mm. they are so fun. <laughs> it's so yeah, because they were originally. I think they were just on Xbox originally, and as someone who just played like PlayStation growing up, I never got to play it, so I thought it was really cool. But they were actually in the original releases. Apparent for Xbox, apparently, yes. Huh. Okay. Yeah, not okay, for well, not for the PlayStation Two, hmm. but okay. But yeah, Saj Saj Ventures, she she like where she uses her her two her two lightsabers. They say as nunchucks, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> she like yeah, turns around so like cool. just like oh, it's great. And she has these like yeah. daggers she shoots out for her special attacks. Oh, cool! Great. <laughs> and Kid Fisto has like this like force ball. He just, like shoots out. Yeah, he, like. <laughs> throws like force basically you're just like okay yeah <laughs> it's cool um so yeah i uh like it is yeah like that though the the addition of those on you know on a console that i have was was like sold me on continuing to play it because like like i said i put over 200 hours into the original on 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 pc so like I wasn't expecting to like, you know, put that many hours into this one, <laughs> but, but like, at least, at least that is something new that I don't have on the one that I already had on PC. Right. Yeah. Also, I think I've even said this on, on the podcast before, when, um, when like picturing the ideal, like, you know, like, when imagining a a ported or remastered or like remade version of Battlefront 2 on modern systems, my like one thing was essentially just take all of the maps that are in Battlefront 1 and put or that aren't in 2 and just put them in 2. And they didn't do all of them, which is fine, they didn't have to. But the, the ones that I specifically wanted being uh, Bespin and yep. Java's Palace, perfect. <laughs> Oh, perfect <laughs> oh my gosh no the like, platforms like bro, yeah if it, it that, felt that, so that, mm -hmm. the tunnel is just like so much PTSD. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so i've seen so much going just down i was just like all right here we go and it's like everything's going great and then like yeah we're doing great and then all you see is count dooku running you're like oh <laughs> my god because <laughs> you're in battle for one the heroes are terrifying like mm -hmm. you can't kill them i don't think so it's yeah like, no mm -hmm. they like it's so it's so bizarre playing playing with battlefront 2 mechanics on bespin because i i like battlefront 1 but after playing probably when i got battlefront 1 i probably had at least 80 to 100 hours in battlefront 2 and the mechanics are so bafflingly different <laughs> yes yes they are just the way things move i don't even think there was a sprint button the way there's not why <laughs> you, can't, you can't run in the first game it's just so it's weird just not the way grenades yeah. work especially just blows my mind like in two you throw a grenade it, it like it latches onto a wall it latches onto a tank and then blows up if you miss it, like in, in battlefront one you throw a grenade it like it like 
bounces around, bounces, yeah. around. It, like sometimes it goes right back at you. It's like what? What is, what's this for? <laughs> no, it's definitely interesting because it's like it's very they're very different. And the and also vehicles feel very different too. Oh yeah, like, like it's like it's vehicle, it's like a, the it's the, the no dash button, especially on the vehicles, make them unplayable. Mm. I don't I don't like them. No, it's weird. Yeah, the vehicles they like you want them to feel OP, but they feel so clunky. It's not even worth it. Which kind of feels real, but also kind of doesn't. No, like especially when you're in those ones, like those like prototype chicken walkers. Mm. Like how, the point of these things is to kind of go fast, but okay, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, like, I guess we're just not, but all right. Just like oh, destroyer droids were OP in that game. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like if you don't, if you don't somehow snipe them at the moment their shield goes down, they just put it right back up. Like, yeah, no, know. no, you have literally what you have to do is you have to just double missile, and then that takes the shield, and then you just like. Spam and shoot them. If you don't mm-hmm. really quickly, then they'll kill you instant. And they they were so they kill you in like two shots. It was like, oh, you didn't get the bell. Gone. <laughs> so, I, 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 I thought I was behind cover. You you were not. It's not. Yeah. Bad. But yeah. No. So, it's super fun. Yeah. So I, I got this collection Wait, to play Battlefront Two, <laughs> especially especially with yeah, no. and those other places. Like I don't need to go back. But it's good that I have it just, you know, just in case. Right, you know, it's just there. It's also, like, you know, but it's, like, there's, there, Battlefront 1 is good, but there are a few things that I prefer in Battlefront 1 over Battlefront 2. Mm-hmm. Like, the Especially maps. Like, those couple maps yeah. were about it, and we have those now. Yeah, so. the maps, the heroes actually being playable, of course, and, like, even also, like, Galactic Conquest kind of gets, like, a facelift so to speak i mean i liked it a lot in one too but i think two it just kind of like it feels mm-hmm. more yeah load times are a lot better I, I did hear that i did hear the load times are like insanely bad although i heard the loading sound on battlefront one is like gone yes and that's it's it's theorized that essentially what the, the sound that it has now it is different i heard them back to back it is different it's theorized that essentially the original sound was basically an error in the coding that happens sometimes with older games where like they coded the sound one way but just the way things are compressed it'll either be chipped chipped up or way like or way chipped down Mm -hmm. so now what you're hearing now is basically what it should have been but you're so used to the original this sounds wrong even though it's right the code says it should sound like this and in the remastered form it's running it properly, although it's wrong to you because it's not what you're used to. Mm. I do think it sounds worse, though, but that's just <laughs> <it's> preference. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's also just, it's the nostalgia, you know? It's just kind of like, come on, like, we, you know. Yeah, like, I mean, they, I don't, but you can't really, like, go into the code and tell it to do something. Like, I feel like there'd be more work to do on it in that one specific line of code to make it sound higher when the original, like, I don't know, I just feel like it wasn't, I feel like a lot more work would have gone into it than they were willing to put into it, just to make it sound how it isn't supposed to. <laughs> that makes mm. sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, yeah, but, there and there is, like, there is the, like, local multiplayer, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. From the original. Yeah. Okay. I was just make. I was just making sure because I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's like my greatest fear with games now. Like, yeah, we brought this game back, but we took away multi multi local multiplayer for no reason, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, please don't. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah, I haven't actually tried it, but I, I I've actually played it. But I there is the button and you click on it. It's like connect second controller, so it's there. I just have okay. To it, okay. It is Good there. to know. Good. Because like I was considering getting them. I'm like. If I'm actually gonna do this, I'm literally gonna do this just so I can beat my brother. <laughs> like, mm. like that that's right. the important part. But <laughs> no, good that they're actually doing this though. I mean, oh, like, yeah. yeah, the online definitely needs a huge improvement, but I mean the rest of it, you know, the fact that they're still yeah. doing it though is good. Yeah, I'm aspire that the people that, that made it, they're a kind of smaller port studio, so I'm sure they made the the servers as big as they feasibly could mm-hmm. and then on top of just not expecting it to be as popular as it was like it just kind of came together just to being you know 
just not the best experience at launch. It's not really their fault. They, I'm sure they did the best they could, and mm-hmm. they even came out like the, the, the day after being like, "Hey, we're sorry. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to increase server capacity." So they, it may be even may even be good now, but let's not. The zeitgeist is over, so you know that's how they'll remember it as being bad. <laughs> but I'm having fun at least with single player, so that's all I care about. I mean that's what I mean that's what you got it for that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I I probably I probably will I might see if the price goes down a little bit I know like mm-hmm. well you know it's you know I I feel like there's a decent chance it will I know Switch games specifically for some reason don't go down but like third party except- games are more often do but this being digital oh. only it does kind of mean that the chances of it going down is solely up to the developer and you won't just like find it in a five dollar bin somewhere because there's no cartridge to yeah and that's the thing too it's like oh wait for star wars day star wars day it might there might be a, a sale that day Ooh, i didn't think about that that might be yeah. smart yeah i don't know like digital i hate digital only i just i don't trust it because like what I if agree. they're just like i don't know i just i need the actual in the day of HBO Max, just deleting stuff. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, like, I don't, like, if I buy it, I want to have it forever, period. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not, I don't and know. There have been games in the past where, like, infamously, the Scott Pilgrim 2D beat em up. That game, like, a year after that game was, was launched, Ubisoft lo- lost the license to the franchise, so they had to remove it from stores. And if you had it on your PlayStation or Xbox, whatever, like, you have it, but you can you couldn't re-download it or you couldn't, like, yeah. someone like, else couldn't like, get it if they wanted if it. you don't have it downloaded, you'll never, like, you can never get it back. And, like, yeah. And- Legend of Korra game of all guns, mm-hmm. like a while ago, it's like oh, that. Oh, there's too. this Transformer. Almost every Transformer game yeah. is just this this mess of of, of licenses and and just because there's Hasbro and Activision now Microsoft, I guess, and like like THQ is also involved, and like mm. High Moon Studios doesn't exist anymore under Activision. So like, who would be making it if or who would be? I don't know. <laughs> like. And there's also like some Japanese, I think, that's, well, whatever. There's there's a bunch, there's a bunch of people involved in 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 Transformer stuff, and like, not to mention like, you know, individual developers like like you know like that Quarry game made by Platinum. There's also a Platinum Games game that's a Transformers game that's the same story. It's just not available anymore. You know, like I want to play it, but I, I can't. <laughs> right? It's just not it's available. <laughs> You can buy it off Amazon used for over a hundred dollars if you really want to play it. <laughs> right? Like, come on. Yeah. Like I hope Microsoft gets their act together at some point and like is able to work to work out a deal with, with Activision and all the other parties to like get all of those games that are <laughs> that <laughs> like I know that there's like I said there's a lot of licenses because even Nickelodeon I I know is just a is also a, not exactly a party you want to work with all the time. Um, mm. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but it's still just, it just rubs me the wrong way. Mm. Yeah, but, but just like with Sonic, where you can't play it, you know, you can't really play it anymore, at least, mm. you know, they there is a, a trend nowadays of, either remaking or remastering older games to put on new stuff just so you have it. it if for no other reason than just for game preservation like i'm of the opinion that pretty much every good video game should be available at all times no matter where you know within reason right. <laughs> like, where you are like if you are playing a playstation game you should be able to play sly cooper anywhere like I don't even know if you can play a Sly Cooper game on your PS5. I don't know if that's possible. And it's so weird because it's just like, why? Like, what? what's really the reason? Like, we could do this if you really wanted to. You mm-hmm. just choose not to. 
<laughs> yeah, like at least Microsoft has of the vast majority of their 360 and original Xbox game is backwards compatible. But it's still it was still like up to the individual developers to like agree to it being backwards compatible. And like again, with licensing things, some games weren't able to come over. So it is not a perfect system, at least it's better than, than, than others. And Nintendo was the worst out of this. <laughs> like, I want to play Wind Waker on my new system. Well, can't. Sorry. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> right. Really play Pokemon yeah, Crystal? It's not. Sorry. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> we, we completely own that franchise. You can't play it. <laughs> Yep, sorry, we're gatekeeping. Not too yeah. bad. Like, it's just like, but why? Yeah, I definitely am. I definitely am fearful of an all digital future. But at least you know we're going that way, though. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, but at least as of right now, as long as Nintendo holds strong next generation, we'll be fine for at least a little while. But it'll it'll happen eventually. But I don't like it. But our, you know. Our kids and grandkids, they won't, they won't know a difference, and that's a little, yeah. a little sad, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you know, they can say the same thing about us. Like, back in our day, we had to go to the arcade and put our quarters in and play games, and now the kids can play games at home. You know, I mean, that's what my parents always used to say. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, every generation or so is different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Still anyway, it, moving on. <laughs> um... Next up, I want to just real quick talk about the first trailer for The Penguin on Max. Yeah, it'll, it, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> like, never doubt Matt Reeves, just ever. <laughs> He's like, I expected seeing something great. I was not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Colin Farrell throughout the entire production of this show, like, basically argued and argued and argued with Warner Brothers to to let him smoke a cigar, like, for the show, because apparently one of the stipulations for the Batman was that the Penguin wasn't allowed to. He's like, if this is my show, it is a rated R show, the mm-hmm. Penguin should be able to smoke a cigar, and they finally Ooh. let him do it. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's one yeah. of his iconic things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at that point, just don't give him an umbrella either. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, seeing a lot more of the, of like, the, like, power vacuum and, like, in how the, the Maronis and the Falcons, like, how their past is involved in all of this. Like, mm-hmm. having Clancy Brown as Maroni is so good. <laughs> Clancy Brown's great in everything. Mm-hmm. I love. I do like that he's getting a more live action attention lately. I do. Yeah, I think that's really yeah, good. It's like, you know, just showing up at John Wick. It's like, oh, that's them, Nate. <laughs> yeah, it's like I know that boy's anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's coming out later this year, and it's. Yeah. We will be, be watching. Oh yeah. Speaking of the trailers for things that I'm definitely going to be watching. Uh, Star Wars The Acolyte finally had its first trailer. And I think it could be cool. Yeah. It's definitely a trailer. I'm not like, whoa, I gotta see this. But I didn't see anything that made it look like I'm not interested. Like, it looks very like, okay, Star Wars stuff. Let's do it. So let's Absolutely. see. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, like seeing a bunch of different people with various colored lightsabers, seeing yellow lightsabers in live action hardly mm-hmm. ever happens so that that's cool um it's gonna be a little interesting because there's a huge discussion between nerds online about like whether or not this show will will like mess with the canon of phantom menace because you know they mention how you know there hasn't been we haven't heard 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 sign of a sith in a thousand years but could that just be them, you know, just ignoring stuff? Or do all the people that meet the Acolyte die and they just, they just, like, never... And they never follow up on what killed them? Are they just stupid? Which the answer is obviously yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, but it. I think they'll they'll find a way to still make that line true without necessarily, you know, not having anything or any like. What's the word? Like they can still make it true without basically canceling out. Like, oh, no, no, no. they're not gonna because they're not gonna decanonize anything from the Phantom Menace. I don't see that happening. Right. I think it's just gonna be a thing where, like, well, if you would, from a certain point of view, if you interpret it this way, it's not. You know, they're they're right. Just like these people haven't weren't told about this thing, therefore they don't believe. You know. The right. Sith have been around for a thousand years. Like Right. And that's the thing too. I mean, the Jedi are, you know, notoriously, you know, have their basically had their heads in the sand and overconfidence. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this could dare well be a thing where they're like, oh, that wasn't yeah. a real Sith. If it was a real Sith, this yeah. would have happened. And even like if you take that scene in context, it happens right after Qui-Gon tells them, Hey, I fought a guy with a red lightsaber on this desert planet. He's probably a Sith. And they're like, We weren't told there was a Sith yet, so then you're probably lying. <laughs> it's like, well, mm-hmm. like, come on, guys. <laughs> even though like one of your most trusted friends is telling you this thing happened, you're like, Yeah, we'll, we'll right. look into it. <laughs> with witnesses. Like, <laughs> like it's not just he made it up. It's like me. Obi-Wan, this little kid that I totally think is the chosen one, and everyone else on the ship was like, yep, Mm -hmm. that's a Sith Lord. Yep. (laughs) The the other day, um, my my brother and I were just talking about just whatever on on Discord. And on Discord, you can, like, send GIFs um, Mm -hmm. to each other. I say GIF, by the way, if you didn't know that I say GIF. Um, (laughs) I did not, but that changes everything I've ever thought of now. Sorry. (laughs) Good. The fact that you knew already that it was just like, yes, I'm that person, uh, tells me you've you've suffered enough people attacking how you say it. (laughs) Anyway, um, you you can can send GIFs like, uh, like there's like a bank of, of, of GIFs you can can pick from and stuff uh it's actually very robust um, <laughs> so he, he at some point during the conversation he just like sent me the gif of of qui-gon saying there's always a bigger fish and then he responded <laughs> to being like they really thought they had something with that didn't they and then or they like they really thought they were saying something poetic with that and then i jokingly responded with no you don't get it see that was actually foreshadowing the fact that later in the movie they'll be wondering if maul was actually the you know the big sith or, he, or if he was you know the, the wonderling and i was like after sending that i was like that's what they were trying to do was <laughs> <laughs> like that one stupid line was actually foreshadowing <laughs> You know, I, look, you know George Lucas. He may not do many things. The dialogue may not sound real, but I'll be darned if it doesn't mean something later in the movie. But but then but then they ruined it by literally having a scene with Maul and Sidious talking on Coruscant just randomly in the middle of the movie for no reason. It's like, yeah, we know there's a bigger fish. Out there. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you also already... I mean, we already knew who it was, so it's not like it really mattered, I guess. But... I know. I know. I just... <laughs> yeah, like, you you probably should question his methods, but, but you can't really question his results, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> um, but yeah, Star Wars Accolade comes out this summer. Should be fun. Should be good. Yeah. Sticking with Star Wars. I don't even know if this is worth reporting, but I'm going to try oh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> the Patty Jenkins developed Rogue Squadron project for Star Wars is back in development. Okay. For now. Okay. We'll see if that, that continues. <laughs> Yeah, that was in there for a while, and then they kind of just... This is yep, been nope. the most canceled sh- movie yeah. in history. Yeah, like, 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 isn't this like the third time they've canceled it? It was announced back in like 2018, like 19. a while ago, yeah. And then very quickly after, Disney announced that they were stopping doing the like 
a Star Wars Star saga Wars stories, or story yeah. whatever, which they really should have kept going with that. That was Solo I mean, being a failure was not was not a good litmus test for the entire project. Anyway, um, <laughs> so they just said we're we're stopping doing that. It's like, like what, is, what does that mean for Patty Jenkins? And they're like, we well, don't know. And then after Wonder Woman two flopped, like yeah. this is maybe still happening. Wait, it's actually not. Well, Nick, she's saying that she's like, still I, doing it, but Disney has, no longer has it. Right, right. right. No, I, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, this is still happening. And she Disney. also said that she had talked with James Gunn to develop. Guardians develop Wonder Woman 3, but he was like, I never actually had those conversations. I don't know what he's talking about. So like, <laughs> and and now she and now I don't know exactly who is claiming this now, but apparently it is officially confirmed that the movie is back in development in some capacity. So Okay, yeah. for now. For now. Do we have an expected release of this potentially, or is it just it's happening? No, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> even if, for considering Disney. Even if they did announce a release date, it would either get would just it delayed up. several years yeah. or just canceled. Yeah. If we, and we pretend we didn't <laughs> act like we forgot about it. Which you know, <laughs> I mean, you're right. The, there's also the Taika Waititi Star Wars movie that's supposed to have been coming out every winter for the past like four years and just hasn't happened. <laughs> so I don't know if that's still on the on the books. Like, yeah, this I could mean, be twenty as early as twenty twenty six, but I probably not. I do like the idea of a Rogue Squadron, like like dog fighter, like basically Top Gun in space. Like that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean that could be real. I mean, especially if, done, if they make it like you know done well. But I mean, because mm-hmm. I think that is something that's like has always been a fascination of a lot of Star Wars fans, but never gets mm-hmm. too much time. Especially lately, I feel like every now and again, like because even like the Mandalorian stuff, like they'll have a couple dog fight scenes that are really interesting. Or like even in the Force Awakens, I really like mm-hmm. the like. Millennium Falcon Tie Fighter Cena that was really well done. Oh yeah, like, and watching you know I mean? Poe just come in and just like tracking shots. Yes. Like three or four Tie Fighters. Yeah, that's yes. That was Which good. also was like, yeah, I'm the best pilot. Yeah, and then like halfway later in the movie, oh yeah, that's right, he's good at this. Yeah, like, he's really good. <laughs> yeah, like that, that, that checks out. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I just think I don't know. I think that I think you're right. I think some kind of like a dog, like just following the like. A squadron or like you know dog fighter you know just like stuff like that because i mean that's just you know those type of movies are already cool like in like realistic or historical stuff like, you know, like top gun stuff like that so like doing that but star wars <laughs> while mm-hmm. making it in universe sounds awesome absolutely so in theory we'll see if in three weeks of this gets canceled again <laughs> <laughs> honestly though yeah like, it, like they could do some kind of presentation at D at D twenty or like or a uh, D twenty whatever or uh um or like some kind of May like like Star Wars Day presentation thing and actually have yeah. until I see concept art or like an actual like cast list I don't I'm not gonna believe it. But as of right now, it is on the books to be made at some point in the future. So okay. Uh, speaking of movies that have been in a lot of turmoil, um, <laughs> the the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which they have been trying to make for some reason for years now. Originally, it was going to sh- star Johnny Depp, then it's like, no way, actually, mm-hmm. he's going to be in the same universe, but it's going to star Margaret Robbie, and then, mm-hmm. um, uh, what's her name? Uh, um Karen Gillian was attached to it. And then it's like, oh, we got Johnny Depp back, but it's in a supporting role. And then it's like, oh, the movie's actually canceled, but now it's officially a reboot of the entire franchise. If you're not, I mean, my thing is, if you're not doing Johnny Depp, don't do it. Like, I don't, that just, that sounds like a, like. I would argue, I mean, I would argue if you're not doing Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley, don't bother. Because that's the reason, I mean, that's agreed, the reason like, 4 and 5 I, failed so much, because they weren't in it. I mean, agreed, but I mean, like, 
I know they're like the core, and obviously that's fought pretty far gone. But I guess like I guess for me it's like you, you can at least kind of call it Pirates of the Caribbean if you have Jack Sparrow. Like if you don't have Jack Sparrow, you're just watching you're just watching a fire, you're just watching another movie. Mm-hmm. It just happens to be because I mean no, I mean yeah, the stuff's interesting, but I mean there's not. I mean at this point I don't know, but mm-hmm. like I with a reboot, my biggest fear would be them trying to like essentially doing the Force Awakens style thing where they're just basically doing the first movie again with new actors, mm-hmm. but. Like, you, you know they would at least try. Like, that idea is being pitched around. They'll just do the first movie again with, like, you know, some rising star that they can, you know, that they can, uh, that, you know, they can throw in there. Like, I don't know. I Yeah, which, like, I mean, my thing is I'm okay. Like, I'm okay if you add some more people, but I feel like just throwing it in there all on its own. You might as well just not even call it Pirates of the Caribbean. Just do something else. Like, yeah. Like that, I mean, that that brand still does have value. So they're going to try and milk it where they can. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I mean... Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't love the idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been seven years since the last one. That one was not good. <laughs> Very not good. And it was right. six and years some... before that for the previous ones. Yeah, and I mean, and like it's been so much has happened since then, and there's a lot of like you know what I mean. Like there's yeah, and here here's another thing. Here's another thing that I am very fearful is those pirates movies were some of the most expensive movies ever made. Until Force Awakens came out, Pirates Three was the most expensive movie ever made. When it was four, three. I think Pirates 3 and 4 are both in the top five. And then Force Awakens is still the most successful movie ever made somehow. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So, are they willing to pump over $300 million into a reboot of a franchise no one likes anymore? I mean, are you asking them if they're trying to squeeze off every bit of nostalgia to get anything every dime they can? What do you think? Let's put it this way. Um, the most recent Indiana Jones movie Should not was, <laughs> was $300 million budget. Granted, that movie was a development hell for yes since 2012 when they got the rights for yeah, it. Yeah, but so is this one. I mean... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, at least both of these movies had, had at least, you know, a 10-year development um, or so or, around that. And, you know, and Indiana Jones, like, there was a lot of nostalgia bait. There, you know, the music was there. Like, there was a lot of stuff about that movie that, like, if you're a fan of those movies, you'll you'll probably like it. But but it clearly didn't really resonate with newer audiences. Even even fans didn't, like, like it as much as other Indiana Jones movies. I thought it was fine. Um, <laughs> but considering that movie only made about $350 million at the box office, which is... Not what they're hoping for. I was guaranteed nope. <laughs> when they bought Great. Indiana Jones for a cool billion back in 2012 or 13, whenever it was. I'm sure they were expecting a better return on investment with that. <laughs> so I don't know if they're willing to put all that into another reboot in a similar vein with with a similar budget. I just don't think they're going to do that. Probably. I mean. They shouldn't, but I think they will. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like again, like logically and based on you know experience you just cited, they probably <clears throat> should. But at the same time, they're like, oh, this still makes memes about this. People still like this, and like it's not that we yeah. don't, but I don't think it's enough. And part of like kind of what I'm thinking here is part of the thing, part of what makes you know, the original Pirates movie so special is the fact that they did build incredible ships. Like, those ships are practical. 
every, pretty much every ship they made, like, maybe it was enhanced with CG, but like those are real ships that they made. That's yeah. most, where the most of the budget went. Considering the way movies now, especially Disney movies, are made nowadays, you just know eighty percent of that movie is going to be on a green screen, and <laughs> it's just going to not feel the same. Mm. So I don't know. Like, yeah. It would have to be cheaper for them to make it that way, but will I don't think it would resonate. I don't think that che- it being cheaper to make would would mean that they would recoup their budget anymore if people don't like that it's cheaper. No, and that's the thing. I feel like the magic's kind of gone. I feel like it's been too long, you know, because it has mm-hmm. been a long time. And, like, you yeah. know, all the stuff with, like, I mean, maybe if, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think you definitely shouldn't, but I think they will, and I think it'll fail. Yeah. But, you know, I I don't know, because it's like, especially with all, like, all the off, you know, all the off the screen stuff with Johnny Depp and everything, and then, not that that's up the track, but I feel like maybe if that had, this had have happened, like, right after you could have maybe got a justice for Johnny Wave for it, but, like, mm. now it's been too long. I feel like that's definitely died out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, even with or without Johnny Depp, I always thought that a Pirate 6 was a bad idea. If for no other reason yeah. than Pirates 4 and 5 are both terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, even if it's like, oh, we're going to try our best to go back to the, you know, to the vibes of the first one. Unless you hire the same director, which I don't know why they wouldn't for the, for the sequels, but they just didn't. <laughs> Unless you hire the same director to do it, it's not it's not going to be the same. Hmm. Speaking of Disney movies that uh, are looking for directors, um, <laughs> uh, Spider Man Four is apparently on the schedule to begin develop to, to begin filming this fall. Oh, you said wait, it's looking for a director still. Currently, the the yes. So apparently, Sony and Kevin Feige were having a fight over over who to direct it. Obviously, Sony wanted um, the guy, uh, John. Nope, I lost it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the guy who did the, the 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 first three Spider Man, Kevin Feige wanted this movie to be more street level, not multiversal, very like more personal to Spider Man, and Sony wanted it to be another universal multiversal movie with Toby and Andrew coming back in fighting some multiversal threats. Like he's like, no, we don't want that <laughs> again. No, I mean, we're yeah. good. Like that, that's, a one, that's like a one-time thing. Exactly. Especially after what happened in, at the end of the last movie, like it's his time to just be the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man of New York city. That's especially when you're introducing Daredevil, you're introducing Kingpin, like, even if they aren't in the movie, like the the world is set up for a more toned down Spider Man movie, mm-hmm. and that's what Kevin Feige wanted. And I unofficially, the rumors are he like he won that fight. He won that fight to get to get the original director, you know, n- not to come back and to to find someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a couple of rumors about who. Who was directing it? I'm not. I don't feel confident enough saying even saying who they were, but, but yeah, apparently it's on the schedule to be starting filming to start filming this fall, and there's no director attached to at the moment. Just a vague idea of what they want to have happen in the movie. So okay, yeah. Well, but they're potentially filming. You said, but they're filming in this fall still, but yes. they don't have a. Either. That feels... You know that Tom Holland and, and Zendaya are still are attached to it, obviously. Makes sense. So, yeah. I hope they don't do the thing where they get back together at the end of this movie. I think you should have at least one movie in between, but I mean, she'll, she'll honestly, be there. I would, yeah, I mean, she could be there, but I'd rather, yeah, he kind of, like, move on. Because even at the end of the movie, he, <laughs> like, kind of made the choice to not try to find them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think Spider-Man Four is primed to be something like. Essentially, I want. I want a movie that's way closer to the vibes of Homecoming because that was a much smaller movie. Like, mm. yeah, it's definitely more street level. Like, the villain was not trying to take over the world. Mm-hmm. He was he, he was way more quippy. I think that's something that was kind of lost throughout the rest of the movies. He just, for some reason, just really stopped doing that. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. a lot of his one-liners were very good in Civil War and then Homecoming. Um, so, so if you can do it more street level, you can have cameos of of Daredevil and whoever else if you if you want to. But like, despite someone like a Hammerhead or Silvermane or someone who's mm. or, uh, what's his name, yeah. uh, uh, Tombstone, Tombstone. Just someone. Who, you know, he's just trying to take over the city. That's as big as you need to get. The city, <laughs> this is like, he's run, that, that's all you need. <laughs> but, yeah. But I hope whoever they, the, the, hope the director they pick sees his vision to keep it smaller. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be best. And I think that would be best also, just because you don't need that, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a similar vein, mm-hmm. Avengers 5, which, again, has no official title at this moment, uh, is rumored to begin filming next year. So we've gone from, originally, there was going to be two Avengers movies in 2025, to now one of them mm-hmm. will maybe start filming next year with a director possibly attached but maybe not <laughs> but maybe not like we, we, we it's like it's like you grab the mic we have nothing <laughs> like, <laughs> originally, well, i don't even know if originally at this point they at one point they had the guy they had the guy that was that was uh directing shang chi to do it which i think he'd do a great mm. job but then he stepped away to make shang chi 2 and wonder man make those you'll do great at it um i think peyton reed was attached at one point but after uh after Quantumania, him and Michael Waldron, who wrote that, which again, that's not his fault. I don't really think. Like, I think you just not Michael Waldron. Who was it? No, Michael Waldron. He did uh, Doctor Strange too. Again, not really his fault. That movie was that movie had a lot of internal issues that just kind of made it turn out not great. Um, it's fine. I, I I like it, but you know, it, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um. In, in a similar vein, I think, uh, um, I don't know, getting his name. Ooh, Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi was attached to this project at some point, but that was never confirmed. So, regardless, <laughs> Marvel obviously really wants Avengers 5 to happen because, you know, it's the Avengers. They, they, they should have that movie at some point during, you know, this this phase of <laughs> of Marvel, um, mm-hmm. uh, just it's just very it's very funny to me how just in just a couple of years they went from being so confident that all these movies would come out on these specific days. And granted, the writer strike and COVID and everything that hindered stuff. But like, I'm just very confused on what exactly is going on there to make. That that makes it at least seem so direct directionless. Hmm. Yeah, and I think it's one of the things too that like I I know a lot of things have gone on in the time since the announcements versus now, but it's also just kind of like maybe we got a little ahead of ourselves. Maybe <laughs> or maybe we got a lot ahead of ourselves. It's just kind of like, all right, all right, I get it. We had a lot of success. We want to keep the train rolling, but like, all right, you know, we can take a minute, come back down a little bit, build back up instead of trying to do, trying to like break the barrier every single swing. You know, we don't have to knock it out of the park every time, but mm-hmm. you know, let's, let's make some good stories and then <clears throat> come back together and make another Avengers movie. But also, let's just not just like, all right, do this over here, do this over there, do that, and just like, so where's this going? I don't know, but no, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know when we get there. They're developing a lot of cool things that I want to see more of, but 
there's so many things that I know for a fact we're not going to see the conclusion of any one of those things for like four years. <laughs> that mm. point, I don't know if I'll care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We, we know that the Thunderbolts is currently filming to release next May. Uh, Fantastic Four, that the, the filming for that, I think, is starting up next couple of months. So, like, they are getting projects, you know, like, stuff is happening. Obviously, Deadpool 3 is still coming out this year. So, the stuff that, like, they're, they're, let me put it this way. There is stuff happening that, that has potential to be, to be really good. Obviously, I, I think Fantastic Four has a way higher chance than Thunderbolt Street and Cap, Captain America 4. But, um, <laughs> Honestly, yeah. But it feels like the ones they should be, not prioritizing, but putting a lot of focus on with Spider-Man and the Avengers just feel a little more up in the air, and that's not really where you want to be in a, as a Marvel. <laughs> you know, as Marvel, yeah, you know? I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, and if you are that up in the air about it, I mean, maybe we need to reassess, because I'm like, why are we focusing so much energy on this and that? It's like... I mean, this is literally. I mean, Spider Man's your most famous, most biggest person. Yeah. Period. By and absolutely. Out. And then the Avengers is your most famous anything. So yeah. it's like, let's you know, why don't we prioritize? But at the same time, we kind of have to get there too, because like, you can't just throw another Avengers movie together. I feel like you got to build yeah. up to it. But we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll in, in the next couple of months, we'll get. You know announcements of of who actually is attached to these different projects. I think I think this this uh, either Comic Con or their their D twenty three whatever it's called like those those press conferences will be make or break for like people's anticipation going forward because like you know if you know a director who people don't like is attached to these or if they feel like they don't have faith in that director to make a good a good show or if just no announcements like. You know, they get through all of it. Uh, the, the director for Avengers 5 isn't even announced at all. Like, that's going to be a little, you know, a little interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. Hmm. We'll see what they do, but eh, hopefully we'll figure something out. The last little bit of news. Oh, go ahead, yeah. sorry. <laughs> the last little bit of news I want to bring up is. Um, for last couple of months now, Disney has been uh, kind of betaing this program where if you have Disney Plus and an active Hulu subscription, you can watch Hulu through Disney Plus. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, and as of a couple of days ago, they're officially the same app now. Like Hulu is still there, but. If you're watching Disney Plus, you can watch Hulu stuff on Disney Plus. Wait, really? Yeah. It's just, okay, tab. wait, hold on. It's right, it's like, it's right there. What? It's the Discovery tab. Wait. It's there. Oh, snap. So Hulu's basically... Oh, oh. You know why I haven't seen it? Why? I haven't updated. I haven't updated. That's probably why. Ah. Most recent update, yeah. Okay, well, that's yeah. wild. I mean... That's good, but it's also like... This is bad, though, because now it's like... They're gonna be like, oh well, now you're getting two apps for the price of one. So let's make it two apps for the price of two. <laughs> you know it's coming. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like I guarantee they're gonna sunset the Hulu app and just make Disney Plus like three dollars more expensive, at yes. least three dollars more expensive. Probably like thirteen a month anyway. Like they're. Like with with Max being seventeen, they're they're gonna try to go go that high at least. Yeah, no, at least if not more, I'd probably mm-hmm. be like an even twenty. Yeah. So, part of the reason why I brought this up is that um, with this with this announcement, they like they also changed the logo for Disney Plus. You know how Disney Plus had that like deep blue yeah, color. Yeah, I saw it. Now it's like, it's like a, a turquoise. Weird turquoise, yeah. I like turquoise. It's I'm gonna you know, it takes some getting used to, but it's like 
It's not even like a mix between the blue and the green of Hulu. It's just turquoise. <laughs> I don't really know what the what the deal is. Yeah, I don't hate it. No, but I don't love it either. It's kind of just okay. I do like that it it looks more distinct now from other services because I know I've ranted about this before. It's so irritating to me that almost every single service now is blue. You know, obviously Disney Plus was blue. Prime Video is blue. Max was purple, but now it's blue. Um, <laughs> uh, I think there's one other. I thought there was one other. Maybe not. But like, there, there's a lot of different ser- streaming services that are a very similar shade of blue. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of colors out there. I feel like... <laughs> I liked HBO's purple, but they switched it out for a for basically the exact same color of blue that Amazon is. Yeah, so, I mean, at least Disney is now a different shade of blue. It's like almost green. So that's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, it's like a soft rebranding, I guess, but it's kind of just like. Why this this gives me I, this makes me un- uncomfortable that you feel like you need to change something without changing anything. Yeah, yeah. When this beta first came out and I saw Hulu on my Disney Plus tab, I was like, oh, I wonder if like since I'm playing, you know, since I'm I'm paying for you know the most expensive Disney Plus, I wonder if uh, if the Hulu app will have ads because I'm not I'm not paying for Hulu Premium. But I am paying for Disney Plus, and it's here. Well, it has ads. Hulu, Hulu has ads. <laughs> Wait, even if you have the Disney Plus without ads? Yep. If, if you, you go Hulu, into the... If you have... If the Hulu that you're subscribed to is the one with ads, Hulu will have ads. <laughs> That's despicable. Now, part of the reason for that, I feel like this might not be true anymore, but I think Hulu is still is still owned by at least a couple of different other companies. Like Disney has a majority share, but there's like one or two other companies that still own stock in it. So maybe they have to run ads in order to like, in order to like continue to, to pay out to them or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why exactly. I just know that Hulu on Disney plus has ads, even though Disney plus does not have ads. Hmm. Even, I think even if you got the the Disney Plus like ESP and Hulu bundle, it's the Disney Plus with with without ads, Hulu with ads, and then ESP and whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah, ESP and Plus does not have that much, to be fair. Which I have the bundle, and it's I mean it's cool, but eh, I don't know if it's worth how much it costs. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure they'll yeah. make it worth it anyway. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's just it's just a funny little thing that I noticed. Like that's gonna take some getting used to. But... Seriously, just... especially since like I don't know this this might be a little bit of a leap, but I feel like with Disney's whole aesthetic being like you know when you wish upon a star, that blue looked more like a night sky than this turquoise. Does. Yeah, so like, ding, like that you know a shooting star on a night sky that's just like. Almost like an oceany blue. It's not the same, but oh well. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Like, that's isn't that just like Disney's <laughs> brand? Oh well. Anyway, are there any other any other topics or things you want to bring up for we sign off? I do, and I'm trying to remember it, and I. Thought I was going to remember, so I didn't write it down. But guess who didn't write it down? I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> oh, my God. As soon as I hit stop record, it's going to come to you. I know it for a fact. I know. <laughs> and that's why And that's why I'm, like, really thinking. Um... <sighs> Video game, anime, superhero, Star Wars. I, I don't remember. I'm not probably one of the things you said, but I don't remember. And I... It makes me sad that I don't, and I'm like, crap, but it's fine. It's fine. I'll bring it up next time. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) So with that, we will see you all next time. Take care.